Well, welcome everyone. It's the 28th of April, 2023. This is Asia Documentation Office Hours. Thanks for being here. Topics on my list, Google Summer of Code, a proposal to change the rating system, uh, upcoming LTS, documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17, and end of life notifications and early end of life for CentOS 7. We may not get to those last two and I'm not sure it's crucial that we do. Uh, any other topics you wanna to put on the list? Nope. Nope, good for me. Okay, so Chris, um, so we have, have we officially submitted or is, is that upcoming still? It's submitted. I think the application has been closed. So it's like um, we have submitted rankings okay. to Google for Google's number of code. And that should be, and I double checked everything to be all right, including the mentors list for every select project. So it should be okay. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Thanks very much. Congratulations to you and the other organization admins. So Next okay. next milestone is May the 4th when Google yep. announces uh, the projects, right? Yep. Excellent. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Any any questions, Meg, from you or Chris? Any other comments on Google Summer of Code? I take it we had very good projects this year. We did. We had we had many many submissions. We had lots of involvement from people, oh. and the the data oh, oh, the oh. data looks very good. Excellent. Good to hear. All right. So the next topic then is a proposal from Alex Brandis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the how it looks today, and then we can talk about why the way it looks today is imperfect and flawed. So what you see here is the Jenkins changelog. And there are three icons across the top of each changelog entry, a thundercloud that has hover text I had to roll back, a cloud, I experienced notable issues, and the sunshine that says no major issues with this release. And what, the problem we get is we get silly things like this, where someone pressed the rollback or the notable issues. And then when the dialogue appeared that says, please provide the issue number, they put in the number one. <laughs> now, one is not a helpful thing because this issue is actually not relevant to that release. And we know it's not, right? Because yeah. that issue was resolved in 2007 <laughs> so so and when people put other issue numbers thinking they're being charming or cute or whatever it it reduces the value of the thing however all of our discussions on what can we do to improve the quality of the data that people submit there have ended in a in a gee there's not much we can do because anything we do will tend to reject the wrong things, all sorts of challenges. So this is what we have today. What Alex is proposing is we, he says, hey, look, this is a problem because there's really no classification of the, the numbers that they put in. There's no way we can connect with them. When they enter something, it's completely anonymous. And so his recommendation, let's take out the neutral and the negative votes. So the cloud and the thunder cloud, and just put up a banner at the top. So let's look at what he's proposing. So this is his suggestion. It would look like this. So just with the, the sunshine. So I'm going to click an older one to show what happens. So it says, thanks. And now there should be a 14. There it is. So it incremented by one. Ah. Okay. So, so, and this is the banner that he's added saying, hey, if you need to encounter an issue or if you encounter an issue, please use the community forums to report that issue or 
report the bugs on JIRA following these issue reporting guidelines. And the issue reporting guidelines, Alex and I are two relatively active people on JIRA. And it is the most common thing that happens is we have to tell people, you have not given us enough information to duplicate your bug. Please follow the instructions. And the, the most common response is completely being ignored. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, well, so first, before we, we look at what Tim Jacob's comments were in my comments, anything from either of you, from Meg, from you, or from Chris, in terms of what you think about the, the, the considering going from the old way with, oops, with three, three fields to the new way with only one? Just devil's advocate, what does it buy us to get the, the sunshine wins then is that just a count of how many people said that was happy or it is it's a, it's a it's psychological a, thing for them to say yes i like that no no it's it's not so much psychological for them yeah. although we're happy if it helps them that way it's that we use it in deciding which which jenkins version should be chosen as the next lts baseline ah okay so when when i went when i sent email about three or four days ago saying, I recommend 2.401 be selected as the LTS base, as the next LTS baseline. It was because among other things, I had looked at this, at this data and said, ah, that looks like that's okay. I, I specifically looked at this data and was very concerned because of that number and this bug report. And and correctly so. That bug report is an unhealthy bug. So so yeah, the problem it was, is you would not with the new system you wouldn't see that number. Right right with the new system this would be gone. And now I I had to go I had to watch the bug tracker anyway. So the rating system is certainly not enough to yeah. choose an LTS baseline. Right. I looked uh -huh. in Jira. I. I considered the the changes that had been made in various versions. So there's there's much more to choosing an LTS baseline than just reading the rating system. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it sounds reasonable. So, Chris, anything else that you wanted to observe there? Yeah, the new system is a lot more simple and a lot more cleaner. I think. It, it certainly is simpler and cleaner. You're right. Yeah. And if you're the information you're losing isn't something you really use much, then why not? Yeah. Well, okay, good point. Any other comments there? Okay, so my my concern was that that I'm I'm one who uses the rating system. And so I absolutely did not want to lose it. Tim Jacome, our release officer, said, hey, I'm conf he's conflicted with it. He, okay. he sees them as helpful to get a pulse of the community, but it is spammy, right? It, it tends yeah. to be low value content at certain times. And you can see it if you look at, if you look through the history, you'll see, let's see some, uh, for instance, Here's one with two rollbacks and not none of them entered a bug report. 10 and we got one bug number. Uh, 24 and only two bug numbers. Okay. Two distinct and three total. So, so most people when they click the, the had to roll back, do not, they, they will click this and they'll do okay. And it says, are you sure? And if you mean it, we'll click OK to skip. Mm -hmm. And so now that number will go up to 11. And we, we now have one more, one more entry there. Or they entered a 2 or a 33, et cetera, or 8908. Now that one has nothing to do with, with anything in that release. So same thing as questionable number. All right. And they aren't doing something like filing a GitHub bug and giving a GitHub bug number, issue number. Not as far as I know, because at least Jenkins Core doesn't doesn't have um, 
GitHub issues enabled. So if they were yeah, okay. filing, it would be someplace that I don't know where it is. Okay. So so just again, I'm so I mean, how much of it another alternative is that they get in there and they say, you know, I rolled it back and I'm not doing a lot more. I mean, I, you know, I'm getting so sick of everything I'd buy. Everybody wants to know what I thought of it. And I'm like, <laughs> you know. Right. right. We're at one time it was kind of fun. They want to know, and now it's getting into overload. Mm -hmm. Um, but whether there was something like I don't want to bother with filing a bug, it's a bug, it's not that big a deal to me or whatever. They don't have many options for what they re if they don't want to. I mean, it also strikes me that if you have no details, knowing that if you look on here and you see there's a release where you've had, you know, like 70 people had to roll back. If it was done, I mean, I because I know that too. I get into it's like I'm willing to tell you that this didn't work, mm -hmm. and then you start wanting my social security number and my mother's right. name and my favorite elementary school, you know. And it's and I just say no, I don't have time for you, um, right. you know. Rather than saying I had to roll it back and I'm not invested enough for. Yeah, I, I think you make a very good point that the single click that's involved here and possibly one other field to enter may be the the threshold that people will stay long enough to enter it mm -hmm. whereas if we try to put them into jira the problem with that is if we put them into jira they have to have a, an account on accounts.jenkins.io and we expect them to do a good bug report and that's a lot more effort than they may be willing to spend whereas Okay, this one, this one is actually a good example of, hey, there was a significant issue and roughly half of those who clicked the I need to, had to roll back chose the same issue report. Okay. So so that one, this one is really a an example of, hey, this was quite positive, <clears throat> quite, quite useful and high information content. How would they get to, would they have to go into Jira and look and say, oh yeah, that's my ear, Misha. That's, that's another correct. effort is to yeah. if you when you had that one of your options could be are one of these the issue you had yeah. so that i could simply get to it the other mm. thing that i see that's potentially useful is if i'm sitting here thinking about installing it and there's two types of view there's one who's oh this thing's buggy i want to go in and play with it and see if i can figure it out because i'm that kind of a geek the other is gee an awful large percentage of people who've tried to do this have had problems maybe i'll wait a few days and see what happens and we do uh, lose, we do lose that and you know again it's not a hundred percent reliable right we could have yeah. only one person who had to roll it back and they did a whole big thing and it's a huge problem and nobody in their right mind should ever try to install this but, correct you're you're certainly right but it, I'm thinking if I see something that 50 some people have had to roll back because we wouldn't actually fix that one release, right? If no, we, have... we, we will deliver a new release, right? If, if it's, so, yeah. if something is so catastrophically broken or has a disastrous security problem introduced, we will roll a new release. Right. So, so there is that piece of information. Mm, good. And there, yeah. there's also something psychologically, we want to know what you think. Are you happy? Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, well, no, I'm not happy. <laughs> Do you want to hear it? You know, and I, at that point, I've got nothing else. There's no place to say anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, another thing, what you could simplify is I'm happy. I'm not happy. And yeah. with not happy, it could be, you could say, you could give them a list of issues. Not one of these your issues. So you want to just tell us what happened, you know, which might not be your full bug report, but it might be a hint. Yeah, true. You know, I mean, maybe I had to roll it back because halfway through there was a power outage, and everything was blown up, and the easy and I didn't have more time, and the easiest thing was to roll back. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And on I don't. Know. That, oh, okay. And uh, on top of that, I just want to add. Like, um, well, unless we have a feature that would give us a drop down list of all the issues patched per like uh, per release, otherwise it, it's uh, the feature would not be as helpful. 
So we maybe we could like um, request a feature for that. Okay. Yeah. the The challenge. I agree that if the if a list of issues were presented, it would, in in addition to the empty field. empty field prompting for a bug number, it might have, might significantly increased. Uh, the, the, res, the value of the responses, right? So mm -hmm. if we did the last five bug reports or something like that, last five last seven bug reports or, or the last the titles of the last seven of the most recent seven bug reports something like that as just a wild guess and titles of any bug well no that was probably begging well and titles of bug reports already mentioned So that they would see, oh, hey, 70131 is, has the text that tells me something that sounds like what I was seeing as well. Click it. Right. Okay, good. Good, and then, good insight. And then another, if, you know, I don't know that I'm voting on it. I'm trying to take the opposite side because it does look uh -huh. nice and clean. Um, along with that could be underneath that could be a link if you'd like to file a bug go here, your link to JIRA and follow these guidelines, that thing that you had, but put it right mm -hmm. here so they don't have to go looking for it. Because, um, you know, again, when I don't know where to go, how much am I going to go snooping around to try to find stuff? Um, and then after that, just leave a blank place and make it, you know, give them 140 characters something, you know, or would you like to tell us what your problem was? Briefly yeah. here. Um, when my assumption would be in a large number of cases, you would just ignore that, but they would feel like they'd been able to say something. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So the, the ratings database, I think doesn't have, um, so suggested if we could extend the ratings database to accept general text, we could let them express their opinion right the problem then is then we've got to read that um, then we need to read that with the usual indelicate language. and inappropriate right. content that arrives right just just being a real pain in the took us what if you didn't read it? Well, then it would then it would be no worse than the fact that today we have relatively few people who read. I'm going to paste a link into this one with um, this is something that relatively few of us read. I'll open it here. You have to both promise that you won't be offended if there are words in it that really shouldn't be Mark, shown. You know my vocabulary public. versus yours. <laughs> We've been down okay. this road before. Good, very good. Well, so here's this sheet. This Google sheet is the content of feedback given by readers who are reading pages on www.jenkins.io. Mm -hmm. When when they click, when they click, did this page help you or some such thing? Let me find a page and I'll show you what it's like. Was this page helpful? When they click this, mm -hmm. then please submit your feedback through this quick form. So mm -hmm. here's the feedback form. It was neutral demonstration during Doc's office hours. And answer to one plus three is four, submit. So in order to give foul language to us first, they have to have answered a trivial question. 
Yeah. And there is the text that was just added. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be worded, you know, say, you know, to be most useful, we need to, you know, we need an issue. Does, does, does this issue sound like your stuff or, or mm -hmm. go here and file one and say, you can also just leave a, you know, a brief report. Like, we don't guarantee we look at it. But the one thing might be, if you had one that had, you know, 50 th thunderclouds filed, nobody had filed a bug report, a JIRA ticket, and you're just curious what's going on, it might be worth going and seeing if there were any hints in there. Right. It may have been that some community college took an introductory class and said, let's download Jenkins. Right. That or decided that as their bug submission exercise, they were going to test, stress test the Jenkins ratings database. Right. Yeah. Or anything else. But, you know, you might just find some, you know, you might find that 50 people just didn't feel like messing. There wasn't a ticket they could just click on. They didn't feel like filing one. Right. Um, but they all said, when this was half installed, my machine room caught in fire. Um, you know, and you're right. like, gee flammable pipelines so i don't know and that you know there's a question of how much like i think this thing that suggested would be kind of cool but is it useful enough to be worth the effort and and whether useful or not right now the 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 most common thing is all the ideas in the world need to be supported by someone actually doing the implementation and we don't have anyone who's interested in doing that implementation Right. So if someone decides they'd like to do the implementation, that's a different thing. Then it's, okay, how would we do it? And here's the benefit. Right. Okay. It would, right, would so, actually be, would that be a good issue for some student floating around who wants to, is this a good first issue? Or is it this, this is probably not well suited to a good first issue because it requires access to the ratings database, which is a privileged operation. Uh, and and they could do it maybe with a prototype copy of the database, but ultimately it's there are privileged operations involved, and it's not really well well equipped for development experience. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. Yeah. So are the two of you okay if I submit this as our comment for right now? Sure. Yeah. As long as to make that we're this is not a vote. No, no, like this is we're not this is not voting. This is just, just making comments. Just a thought. Exactly. All right, thanks. Anything else on the community feedback suggestion before we go on? I'm good. Oh. I've mouthed off enough. Yeah, me too. I'm good. Okay. Next topic then, we've got the 2.387.3. Um, change log and upgrade. The release is next week. Yeah, Thanks, Chris, okay. very, very much. Okay, you're welcome. And here is the change log. Let's see. I hope I was hoping he had a screenshot. Nope. So we'll have to, we'll have to, we would have to look at it separately. I have the action item to review this. Whoops, it's been closed. Oh, they have, uh, he, oh opened he, re -op one. he opened another one, I assume, right, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Good. All right. So this one. And I was hoping he gave it, here it is. So here's the screenshot. Yeah. Cool. So emojis in job DSL, hide the checkbox, fix overflow text and restore new node. Oh, and then the crucial thing actually is hiding in the, in the upgrade guide, not the change log, where what the upgrade guide says is, Oh dear. Okay, obviously I need to do some edits here. Extreme and ASCII null handling has changed. And with this change, uh, they need to be sure they upgrade their the JUnit plugin to the latest version. Um, and the, the problem is the old version of the plugin was writing an ASCII zero. Asking mm. null, and that's that, that's per the XML 1.1 specification. That's illegal. It's not allowed. So this is now better compliant with the specification, but 
The problem is we have data, we may have data on customer, on systems that can't be read if you don't have the new version of the of the the J, J unit plugin. Mm. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So and and certainly there's a there's a, a larger fix proposed or a, a larger change proposed for inclusion in a Jenkins weekly, but it's not necessary to put it into the LTS. So we're just going to go ahead with tell people to upgrade their J unit plugin. Okay. That's nice one. Sounds good. All right. Anything else on the LTS? Nope. Okay, next one then, plan to transition the documentation from Java 11 to Java 17. In past sessions, we've discussed that Java 17 is now fully supported and Java, Java 11 will, no long, will not be included in the upcoming release of Debian. It won't, won't be available. And so we felt like rather than spending energy to describe oh for debian 12 you have to use java 17 let's use this as our excuse to document describe everything with java 17 and let people use java 11 if they wish but java 17 will be the thing we're describing okay and so kevin has started the work on this we identified several pages that need to be changed and and we're going to go forward we're now late april and the goal was to complete this in April or May. Okay. So we're on our way. Yeah. We are. Yep. Any questions on that one? Nope. Okay. The next piece was the concept of end of life notifications in Jenkins core. Uh, I believe Chris, you and I discussed this last time, and I'm not sure there's a significant change that needs to be needs to be described further. I actually, about 15 minutes ago, started the implementation. So okay. um, I've discussed it with different levels of people. Meg, for your info, the idea is that Ubuntu 18 will be end of life, May 31st, 2023. Mm -hmm. Jenkins only supports operating systems that are supported by the upstream vendor. Ubuntu 18 will be unsupported June 1st, but we don't have a way inside the Jenkins UI to tell the user, hey, you're running on an operating system we don't support. Uh -huh. And so the, the idea here was, let's find a way to tell that user, you're running on an operating system we don't support with the, the thought that we may be able to use this same technique to tell people, you're running a Docker container that we no longer maintain. Oh, yeah. Or you're running a something else that is no longer receiving updates. And, and so that they know, oh, I need to make a change based on this alert that tells me something. Right. Or I don't feel like making a change. I'll take my chances. But Sure. And, and but then at least they've been warned, warned. that they have to take their chances. Mm -hmm. and, and the concept is that there, there are some things that are a little different about this in that there is a, when should we start showing them the warning? What date should we start showing them the warning? And during the warning period, what, what should, during the, the pre-period, pre we give one message. Then the, the final date happens. The thing is now end of life. We give them a different message and bring the admin monitor up again to say, oh, hey, you are you are not you are not supported any longer so so does it the idea has has resonated with well I, when i reviewed it with chris last week and with alex brandis it was it seemed to be positively received that hey that that would be a helpful thing mm -hmm. So, so there. Let's let's take it that way, and I'll I'll certainly share as I learn more. I'm not a great implementer of Jenkins core features, but I'm happy to experiment and try. And rely on people to tell me, no, you could do it better if you did this or better if you did that. 
Yeah, um, sure. And looking at the next bullet list, would you, if you get this implemented, were you able to use that for CentOS? <laughs> yes, that, and that this is what started the whole idea, right? Because the fact that I dislike CentOS so mm -hmm. strongly um, motivated me to say, how do we get a message to users that tells them <laughs> we're ending support for CentOS 7? And a piece of this is, my my dream is that we'll declare end of life for CentOS 7 well before the official end of life, June 30th of 2024. So I would really love to have CentOS 7 no longer supported be, by the end of this calendar year, because it's it's already plenty of plenty of parts of it are already unsupportable. Okay. Great. Cool. Any any other topics for today's session? I'm good. I'm good too. All right. Thanks to both of you. Uh, recording will be available whenever I get around to posting the recording. Perfect. Thanks okay. so Thank much. You.